welcome to Dave's DIY Adventure Shop. this 2004 Kubota BX23D and the starting issue doesn't matter if it's hot doesn't matter if it's cold every now and then it won't start and I believe I know what the problem is and we're going to step through and see what I can figure out so stay tuned let's get busy All right, I've already pulled off the grill guard. You can look at some of my previous videos to see. There's four bolts that hold it on. If you're familiar with these old uh, BX23Ds, he bolted up right there with four bolts. All right. I've got him pulled off because, uh, well, I had to take it off out in the field because it wouldn't start back for me once I shut it down. So anyway. I know what the problem is and uh, it's got to do with the age of all the wires and all the safety switches and I'm going to verify that the problem is not the safety switches being open what I think the problem is there's too much resistance in the safety switches and the associated wiring and it's not allowing enough current to pull that solenoid up you can hear it click but it's just not, it's not enough power to uh, pull the solenoid up. Stay tuned and we're going to uh, verify that and I'll show you how to troubleshoot. Man, it's a hot one today. We'll pull off uh, four bolts that holds the uh, bonnet on. I, I may call it a cowling, but the uh, Kubota calls it a bonnet. Headlight bulb assembly out. And the uh, bonnet just easily slides up. I said easily, didn't I? <laughs> there we go. There we go. Alright, we have to do that so we can get access to the starter. Alright. And I'm going to show you how I try. I'm going to troubleshoot Okay, this. we're going to attempt to start it. You'll notice uh, I'm in neutral. PTO's off. All right. There should be nothing else keeping this from starting. And just listen to what happens. Can you hear that? Listen to the solenoid. All right. Turn him off. All right, so you see the problem. Now, if a safety switch was uh, causing it not to work, you wouldn't even get the click. So let me show you. I'm going to engage the PTO. All right, the PTO is engaged. Now let's do the, the key switch. If you notice, no click. All right, no click. It's because there's not, because uh, the switch is actually tripped. Now with the PTO in the off position, all right, all right. Now we'll go back. There you go. Now your first thought would be, well, Dave, that's got to be a starter. Well, no, boys and girls, I've already replaced the starter. I got a good deal on a uh, on a starter off Amazon, and I tried that in it. This was about oh, the video's up maybe six, seven, eight months ago. No fixie. 
So I ended up replacing the hot battery cable from the uh, battery to the starter and it seemed to have worked good for a while. But it's cropped up its head again and uh, so I'm going to show you how to troubleshoot at the solar. Alright, I'm pulling the cup back, okay? So I can see that's the main battery terminal connection on the starter solenoid. And this wire is your start solenoid uh, wire that, uh, that you apply 12 volts to it and it will pull the solenoid and then make this 12 volt uh, high current connection spin the starter. I'm going to show you how, uh, how to do a quick and easy down and dirty test. All right. All right, I'm gonna use two screwdrivers because that's uh, that's pretty much the easiest way to do it. All right, uh, so this I'm gonna use this screwdriver to to touch the terminal inside where the uh, start solenoid connection would go. Then I'm gonna use this screwdriver just to short over to it. All right, so let's see what happens. You see that? I didn't mean for it to start. But anyway, you see, uh, I bypassed all the safety switches and all the wiring doing that. And uh, that just tells me right there that the starter's good. Now what we're going to do, we're going to test this connector right here to see how much voltage we're getting to it to turn that solenoid on. Okay, it looks like the meter can be easier, re easier read with no light on it. So I'm going to hit the starter. Let's see what we get. 10.7 volts instead of the full 12. You see that? 10.8. It's not even 11 volts. 10.9. Alright. So what that's telling me is there's no open safety switch. There's just a lot of resistance in all the safety switches and all the associated wiring from that key switch through all the safety switches, through all that wiring to get to this wire to go into here. So you're going to say, well, what's the fix? Well, from what I understand, Kubota does have a kit that'll do it, but I'm not going to use their kit. I'm just going to use a standard automotive 12 volt relay and I'm going to uh, wire in a uh, a a start relay right here in this compartment and I'm not going to cut any wires so that way I can uh, go back to stock if I ever so desire so anyway stay tuned and I'll show you how I'm going to do it. okay I have uh, the black and white and I'll show you I'll, uh, on my another relay I'll show you but the black which is uh, 85 terminal 85 I believe here or 86 85 or 86 is the coil of the relay and I'm the black lead I am grounding to the solenoid and the white lead here is my hot that's going to come from the key switch so what I'm going to do is put a connector on it so I can plug it into that plugs into him. Now what we're going to do is do a quick test and I'm going to use my little continuity tester here for the uh, to actually do the test. Turn, turn on the LED. I don't know if that's going to show or not. Alright. The red is common. Or is it? Let's see. thought it was but it may not be. turn that light off now what you want to watch is for this light to come on see right here see that light all right I'm, okay here goes the key switch 
All right, that is the relay throwing. All right, all right, I got carried away wiring and didn't uh, pay attention that I wasn't recording. All right, so let me show you what I did. All right, uh, the white wire to this standard automotive relay is uh, coming from the key switch uh, and all through all the safety switches and everything in the tractor. So what that means is every safety switch is still intact and operational. Uh, I haven't bypassed anything, uh, but I am using that wire there to trip the relay. All right, the white and the black of the relay here I'm taking to ground and I'm grounding it right here on the this lug of the starter all right solenoid you see this long bolt here that's I'm grounding to that right behind there and I'm mounting to that long one so I've actually mounted the relay to the starter solenoid all right now the uh, the yellow wire is the armature all right it should really I should take that to the uh, positive turn you know to the battery terminal of the starter but unfortunately it's it wasn't long enough so uh the make contact which is the blue is what i've taken to the battery so basically what happens is when this when uh we energize the key switch it'll throw this relay and this relay will take this 12 volt right here and throw it straight into the solenoid all right so the volt at 12 volts going to the solenoid is not going through all the safety switches and wiring. It's just going through, uh, you know, basically through a set of contacts in this relay. All right. And that takes away all that resistance that uh, we were encountering. Now, this is a com uh, somewhat of a common problem. So much so that uh, Kubota even makes a kit to do this. And again, I'm just using a standard automotive relay. So let me show you how she works. Everything buttoned up. T switch. All right. Let me tell you, boys and girls, it's been a long time since it, uh, I didn't have any trouble getting that thing to work. Now, again, like I was saying, all the safety switches work. And to prove it to you, I'll show you. All right. Oh, let's get up here. All right. Let's engage the PTO. All right. The PTO is engaged. No starty, all right? Take him back, I believe. Put him in gear. All right, we went to high. Let's swatch. No starty. Take him out of gear. And there we go. Hopefully, that'll take care of my problem. What I'll do is I'll show you uh, on my bench the relay itself and uh, maybe make up a schematic so you can see. But uh, just to show you again how I've mounted it, I've just mounted it actually to the start solenoid right here. All right. And uh, I'll bundle them wires up out of the way. This is 12 volt. I don't know if you need it or not, but it, uh, with the relay unenergized in the normal state, actually 12 volts is sitting on that. So I'm going to tape the end up so there's no possibility of it shorting out. All right. I'm going to button him back up. Good couple inches clearance, no problem. All right. I like to stick the bolts in backwards, put the Allen heads on the inside, that way you can get a 
and impact to it a whole lot easier. <laughs> All right, I'm going to see if I can explain what we got going on here. Make sure we're still connected. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. This is the main thick battery cable, positive cable, from the battery to the starter. All right, that's the starter lug. This wire here is carrying voltage back to the tractor. That's uh, to the fuse panel and all the tractor electrics that way, all right? This is the wire I added, which it will bring that same battery 12 volts up on the blue wire to terminal 87. That would be this blue wire right here, okay? And that is the make contact. In other words, when, when voltage is applied to this relay, that 12 volts will go to from 87 to 30, okay? And 30 is the yellow wire right here, and it goes down to the solenoid, all right? Now, this was the wire that came from the factory in Kubota that was originally plugged into the solenoid. What I've done is I've taken the white lead here of the relay and plugged it in to this connector here, all right? So when you turn the key switch to start, 12 volts is applied to this connector. Now remember when we read it with my meter, we, were, we weren't even getting 11 volts and it wasn't enough to uh, uh, energize the solenoid enough to run the starter, all right? So what we're doing is we're instead of going straight to the solenoid with it we're taking it in to this relay which is part of the coil the pull down coil on the relay and then the black lead is to ground so when 12 volts is applied to this 12 to this white lead going into the relay right here okay when 12 volts applied the relay will make pin uh, terminal 30 and 87 all right so by making 30 and 87, this 12 volts sitting here at the starter will come out, go through the relay, and hit the solenoid. And that way we've got definitely 12 volt. The only voltage drop we'll have now is what's uh, across that relay, which is virtually nothing. So we've gone from uh, not even getting 11 volts out of this wire to the solenoid by wiring this relay in, we're guaranteeing we're getting the same 12 volts that'll spin this starter, that'll spin that three-cylinder diesel engine, so that means there's a lot of voltage and current. That same voltage is being applied to engage or energize the solenoid. All right, so it don't matter how much resistance is detected on this circuit here, be it, uh, you know, the corroded contacts and the safety switches, the wire terminal connections could be getting a little corroded. You know, all that adds up to resistance. So these relays, they'll click, they'll make off, now I don't, you know, a nine volt battery, you know, will click one of these relays. So this being 10 to 11 volts, it won't be a problem to throw this relay. And once we throw that relay, we got this 12 volt going to that solenoid. All the, cir all the safety circuits are, are uh, still uh, in play and, act and will be activated. They are not bypassed. The only thing we've done is taken the, uh, the starter wire from the solenoid and ran it through a relay, made it energize the relay to put a true 12 volts to the solenoid. So that should fix us up. Uh, hopefully that's pretty self-explanatory. It wasn't hard to do. 
you know, most of it's uh, I have worked in my mind, in my head, so uh, anyway, that should do it. All right, that was a quick fix to get this thing back in business. Lock that up. Uh, it jumped to the front of the line. You can see I got a lot of projects going on in here. I got a brand new project sitting over here, 75 uh, Orbit Stingray that uh, needs some attention, and I got my 49 Chevy truck. But the Kubota jumped to the line because I bought this thing new in 2004. And uh, it only had a couple hours on it when I bought it, just what they were demoing me. And I've put pretty much either me or family members that's borrowed it have put every bit of the hours on this thing. And we're at about, what, 1,226 hours. And uh, it's primarily my finish mower for four acres. And, uh, of course, I do other stuff with it, but mainly it mows. And uh, for the first time today, I shut it down by accident, didn't mean to, and I couldn't get it to restart. I had to, uh, I had to take the uh, bonnet off out in the field uh, and uh, bypass the starter with my uh, those two screwdrivers to get this thing started so I could continue to finish my mowing. So I decided we're going to get this thing fixed. So anyway, uh, if you're interested in some of the other projects I'm into, the 49 Chevy, the 75 Corvette, my own uh, my Ford F-150, the wife's new uh, Escape, well, uh, you can tune in to my other channel, which is Ball Fan DT or Ball Fan it. I'll put a link down in the uh, description. And uh, you can follow some of my stuff there. Uh, I would put this there, but uh, this is more uh, agricultural and tractor and uh, just general maintenance on my other stuff. So it doesn't really, uh, there's no big uh, demand for that type of uh, content on my other channel. But you can look at that if you'd like to. Uh, so anyway. I hope you're having a good one. I hope things are going good with you and yours. Things are going good here. Can't complain. It would do me no good to complain anyway. So have a good one. And I hope to see you around on the next one. Whenever it may be on this Mr. Capote. Have a good one. And we'll see you.